Okay, here's warm up 6.1. We're going to simplify. So, this first one, we've got a uh, radical in the denominator, so we need to rationalize the denominator. We can't have a radical in the denominator in simple radical form. So, what I often st see students do um, is multiply the top and bottom by this because that's kind of what we do if we had um, a square root, the square root of 3. But the problem with that, that's not going to help me get, well, it's going to help, but it's not going to completely get rid of the radical in the denominator because um, since this is a cube root, I'm going to need triplets. I need three threes in order to get them out of there. And if I multiply straight across, at this point, I'd only have two threes. It'd be three times three under that radical, which would be the cube root of nine. And I can't simplify that any further. So since I need triplets, I've only got one three to start with, I need two more three, so I'm going to multiply by three squared, by the cube root of three squared on the top and the bottom. Okay, So then I've got two times the cube root of three squared, which is just nine. Right? On the bottom, I have now three to the third. So, hey, the cube and the cube root undo each other. You can think about it as having three threes down there. You get the triplets, but that's going to simplify to three, or it's the cube root of 27. Okay. On top, I'm um, looking for any triplets under the radical, but it's just 2 times 2, so we can't simplify any further, but then this uh, is simplified. Okay. All right, second problem, we've got a radical in the denominator again. If you just multiply by root 2 of root 2, it's not going to work because you'd have to distribute the root 2 and multiply both these pieces by root 2, so you'd still have a square root in the denominator. So when you've got um, a situation like this, you want to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate of 5 minus root 2 is 5 plus root 2. You just change the sign of the radical part. Okay. And then um, I'm going to distribute the 2 in the numerator, so that would be 10 plus 2 root 2. In the denominator, I'm going to FOIL. Um, so let's see, first 5 times 5 is 25. Outer would be 5 root 2. Inner is negative 5 root 2. And then last, I've got negative root 2 times positive root 2. That's going to be negative root 4. Okay, and I still have radicals in the denominator, but hang on, these two pieces are opposite, so they cancel each other out. And then the square root of 4 is just 2. So I can simplify the denominator like that, right? I just uh, rewrote root 4 as 2, and now 25 minus 2 is going to be 23. So I've got 10 plus 2 root 2 over 23. And then I still want to check to see if I can reduce any more. So I'm looking at the three terms here, but nothing goes into those three terms. Nothing goes into 10, 2, and 23. So I can't reduce that any further, but I don't have a radical in the denominator, so that's considered simplified. Okay? All right. Now let's find some inverses. When you're finding the inverse of an equation, what you want to do is switch the x and the y. And yeah, this isn't a y, but I'll think of this as my y. So if I switch those, it would look like this. And then I want to isolate the y. So, okay, I want to get the y by itself. Let's start by adding 7 to both sides. So now I've got x plus 7 equals 4y squared. Um, now I can divide by 4. Okay, and I've got x plus 7 all over 4 equals y squared. And then the last step would be to um, take the square root of both sides of the equation. And when you do that, we get the plus minus. That's important. Get the positive and negative root of that fraction. Okay, And that's y. So now the last piece, I would change this back into function notation since we started in function notation. So the inverse... That's the, the inverse of f of x, right? So I'm just writing that where the y was. And then I've got positive and negative square root of the fraction. Okay, You could split this fraction into a radical uh, of x plus 7 over radical 4 and then simplify the root 4 if you wanted to. That's kind of a sideways move if you ask me, but um, some teachers like that. Okay. All right, next problem, same kind of deal. We're going to switch the x and the y, 
it's just we're dealing with a cube root here, um, but the, the principle is the same. So I switch the x and the y, and then I'm going to isolate the y. So I'll start by subtracting 7 from both sides. Okay. And now um, I want to get rid of the radical, so I'm going to cube both sides of the equation. So I've got x minus set, the quantity x minus 7 cubed equals y minus 3. And then y is almost isolated. We just want to add 3 to both sides. Okay. And it's true you could multiply this out x times x minus 7 times x minus 7 times x minus 7. Um, I'm not going to go through with uh, multiplying that out um, since I don't have much space here. But you could do that. I'm just going to say, I'm going to leave my answer like this. And that is the inverse. Okay. All right. Next up, we've got f of g of x. I've got function f, function g, and I'm going to find f of g of x. Sometimes you might see um, this with like an open dot. It kind of looks like the word fog, but that's supposed to be an open dot kind of floating in the middle. And that means f of g of x, where this one would be, would be written like this. These are compositions of functions. So this means that. Okay. And um, part of the reason I'm doing this problem, I want to point out that f of g of x is not necessarily going to be the same as g of f of x. So let's try this out. On these problems, I like to start with the um, innermost function, which here is the g of x, and I'm going to substitute in g of x. So um, g of x is equivalent to 4x minus 1. So I could write this as f of 4x minus 1. Okay. And then the next step, I want to input 4x minus 1 into function f. So I'm looking at function f. The input is where the x is. So I'm going to be replacing that x with the quantity 4x minus 1. So this is going to be 3 times something minus 2. 3 times something minus 2. And my something is going to be 4x minus 1. Okay. And then I'm going to um, simplify this a little bit more by distributing and combining like terms. So that gives me 12x minus 3 minus 2, and that means 12x minus 5. Okay, all right, let's try it the other way. g of f of x, so now I'm starting on this innermost function. f of x is equivalent to 3x minus 2. So I'm substituting in 3x minus 2 for f of x. And now I'm going to input 3x minus 2 into function g. So function g, the input is where the x is, 4 times something minus 1. 4 times something minus 1, and my something is going to be 3x minus 2. And then, again, I'll distribute and combine like terms. So I've got 12x minus 8 minus 1. That's 12x minus 9. And hey, it's different, right? Okay, that's the end of the warm-up, and I'll see you next time.